Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to teach you about exponents, everything you need to know so you can dominate the SAT or ACT math sections. All right, let's begin. First, I'm gonna go over the fundamentals that you really need. You need to memorize these backwards and forwards. If I have the same base and I'm, I'm multiplying, I would add the exponent. So for example, two to the two times two to the three, I would add the exponents. It would be two to the two plus three or two to the five. If I'm putting an exponent to an exponent, for example, two to the two to the third power, I would multiply them two to the two times three or two to the six. If I'm dividing, for example, two to the seventh divided by two to the two, I would subtract the exponents two to the seven minus two, which is two to the five. For If I have two to the one half, that's the same as square root of two. If I have two to the one third, that's the same as cube root of two. Notice it's much easier to have it in exponent form than saying cube root of two. I would just put it as two to the one third. If the SAT gives it to you as cube root of two, you might want to change it to two to the one third. If they give it to you as two to the one third, you might want to change it to cube root of two. I generally like exponents better than, um, than square roots or cube roots. It just keeps it cleaner and organized. And kind of, I could follow these rules in order to get the right answer. Two to the negative two. If you have anything to the negative power, it's always one over that to the positive power. So two to the negative two is the same as one over two to the two. You could combine these rules. For example, two to the negative one half is the same as one over two to the one half. So remember, anything to the negative power is one over that to the positive power. So then that would be one over square root of two. Okay, so you get the gist. These are the rules that you need to memorize. There are not a lot of them, but you have to understand them. So then the question you're asking is, hey, what can they ask me? And I'm gonna actually demonstrate it with real official questions. Uh, but let me give you two examples to really hit the point home. They can ask you, for example, 2 to the x is equal to 8 to the 5. Now, when you see this question, what you need to do is you always want to get the um, exponents in the same base. So here I have a base of 2. Here I have a base of 8. Well, what can I change? Well, I can't change the 2, but I could change the 8. 8 I could make as a power of 2. So... What's, uh, what's 8? 8 is 2 to the 3. So this becomes 2 to the x is equal to 2 to the 3, right? Because 8 is 2 to the 3 to the 5. So I just changed 8 to 2 to the 3. So now this becomes 2 to the x is equal to 2 to the exponent to exponent you multiply. So that becomes 15. So now 2 to the x equals 2 to the 15. So x equals 15. So whenever you can change the base of the exponents, do it. You want to make the same base and you want to simplify as much as you possibly can. What else, what else can they give you? You might see something like this, two to the two thirds. Well, what, what is that? Well, that's really the same as two to the two to the one third. Remember, we can separate it. I mean, we could combine it and we could also separate it. So what is two to the two to the one third? Well, we know to the one third is cube root and that's the cube root of two squared. Okay, so now that you understand these rules, let's go ahead and demonstrate it using actual previously administered exams. So the first question we have here, this is a question that most students get wrong. They like look at this and they're like, what is happening here? If three X minus Y is 12, what is the value of eight to the X over two to the Y? I mean, you're looking at this and you're immediately going to tell me, I can't do this. This is too complicated. But let's take it slowly and carefully and then ask ourselves, what do we know? What can we, what can we do in this, um, in this equation? If I have exponents, I always want to make them the same base. So let's look at this right here. A to the X over 2 to the Y. I can make 8 a power of two. So let's do that. So this becomes two to the three to the x over two to the y. Oh, well now I have two to the three to the x, that can be the same as two to the three x over two to the y. Okay, and now what do we know? 
Well, when you have the same base and you're dividing the exponents and, and you're dividing it, um, you would just subtract the exponents. So it would just be, it would be two to the three X minus Y. And what do we know that three X minus Y is? They're, they tell us it's 12. So it's just two to the 12. Easy peasy. I mean, you look at this question, it looks like super complicated, but when you start working through this question using the exponent rules that we discussed, it becomes straightforward. Remember, the SAT is not going to give it to you in an easy way. The SAT is going to give it to you in a more roundabout or complicated way. So when you can make things simple for yourself, go ahead and do it. So if you could change the basis to be the same, do it. You always want to change things up to be simple. All right. Let's move on to the next problem. Here, number three. Now, this is something that we talked about. Which of the following is it equal to a to the two over three? So a to the two over three. So what is that? That's the same as a to the two, a to the two to the one third. So that's the cube root of a to the two. You got it. I like to keep it in um, the exponent form rather than switching to uh, square root. Save that towards the end because then things can get a little bit messy. All right, let's move on to the next problem. We're looking at problem number 12. This looks a little bit more complicated, but nothing that we can't do. So which of the following is equivalent to 9 to the 3 over 4? Okay, well, what do we know right away? Right away, nine, I can simplify it to three squared. So this becomes, so nine to the three over four is the same as three squared to the three over four. Okay, um, well, now this becomes three to the six over four. And what can I simplify even further? Well, six over four becomes three to the three halves. Okay, so now we're getting somewhere, three to the three halves. And we finally got to a, a good place. Unfortunately, there's no answer choice there. So we have to just sort of keep going and, and, and manipulate it a little bit so we can, we can get to the answer. Three to the three halves becomes three to the one and a half which is just three times three to the one half, which is three square root of three. And that's the answer. Let's say, let's say you didn't know how to break it apart that way. And instead you have it as three to the three to the one half, like we sort of talked about before, then that becomes the square root of three to the third. Well, there is no answer choice square root of three to the third. So that would become the square root of three squared times three. And you could pull out the three squared. So it would become three square root of three. That's sort of the second way of doing it, but I'm trying to give you multiple options. So you can, you can do whichever way um, works best for you. And that's, that's basically it. So let's move on to the next question. And question number 16. If a to the b over 4 is 16 for positive integers a and b, what is one possible value of b? All right, so this looks very similar to what we've seen before. Um, 16, we should change to a power. But we don't know what a is. So because they're asking for one possible value, we can choose whatever power we want. So 16, what are you thinking? Four squared, I mean, you could use two to the four also, but let's just say four squared. So you have a to the b over four is equal to four squared. So, so then a would be four and b would be eight because b over four has to equal two, b has to equal eight. And that's one possible value. I mean, there are other values also, but that's it. You get the right answer, you move on, right? Harvard's not gonna know the difference when you get a perfect score. All right, let's move on to the next problem. Question number 11. 
the expression x to the negative 2, y to the 1 half over x to 1 third, y to the negative 1 um, is equivalent to which of the following? All right, so this looks a little bit challenging. There's multiple ways of doing it. I'm going to show you one way. When you have the same base, you could subtract the exponents. That's what I like to do. I like to simplify it as much as I can. So this becomes x to the negative 2 minus 1 third times y to the 1 half minus negative 1. Are you with me on that? Because you have the same base, x to the negative 2 divided by x to 1 third is just x to the negative 2 minus 1 third. And y to the 1 half divided by y to the negative 1 is just y to the 1 half minus minus 1. So what's negative 2 minus 1 third? So negative 2 over 1 minus 1 third. Get a common denominator. Common denominator is 3. Multiply top and bottom by 3. So you have negative 6 here, 3 on the bottom. So that gives you negative 7 over 3. So this becomes x to the negative 7 over 3 times y. What's 1 half minus minus 1? 1 half minus minus 1 is just 1 half plus 1, which is just get a common denominator, 2 over 2. So it's just 3 halves, y to the 3 halves. OK, so we're, we're getting somewhere. Well, x to the negative 7 over thirds is just 1 over x to the 7 over thirds. And y to 3 halves is just y to 3 halves. So this becomes y to the 3 halves divided by x to the 7 over thirds. Well, we know y to the 3 halves is just y times y to the 1 half. That's similar to what we did previously. So that's y squared of y. And then x to the 7 thirds is what? x to the um, 2 and 1 third, right? So 7 thirds gets converted to 2 and 1 third because 3 goes into 7 two times and there's 1 third remainder. So x to the 2 and 1 third. So that's the same as saying y times square root of y over x squared times x to the one third. And what's x to the one third? Just square, just cube root of x. So that's the answer right here. y squared of y over x squared cube root, cube root of x. There's other ways of doing it, but this you just have to use the exponent rules. Don't be don't be worried about fractions. Just work slowly and carefully until you get to the answer. Remember, they're not going to put the questions in the right way so that the answer will just immediately be, be recognizable. You have to do some work. So you're going to have to follow the rules that we discussed and put in some work. But the work should be just relatively simple math, not anything complicated. OK. Let's move on to the next problem. And this is going to be. This is going to be the last problem that we're going to do. Number 13. If a to the negative 1 half is x, where a is greater than 0, what is a in terms of x? So now, what does this represent? So they're looking for you to solve for a. So what is a to the negative 1 half? That's the same as 1 over a to the 1 half. And what's 1 over a to the 1 half? Well, that's 1 over square root of a is equal to x. So now let's just solve for, solve for a. So what do we do? Let's, let's isolate the a. So let's multiply by square root of a to both sides. Multiply square root of a, multiply square root of a. So we have 1 equals x square root of a. Divide by x, 1 over x is equal to square root of a. And now we want to get a, so we square both sides. So you have 1 over x squared is equal to a. And that's it. So just follow the approach that we discussed. All of these questions were answered by the rules that we talked about. Make sure to memorize those rules. Remember, if they give it to you in exponent form, you could convert it into uh, into square root. If they give it to you square root, convert it into, into exponent form. I really like to keep it exponent form as much as I possibly can and just manipulate it that way. 
great work and thanks a lot for uh for watching the video please subscribe and share and uh, and we'll work on another one next time appreciate all your support